The U.S. isn't the only major player hoping to make strides at the U.N. this week. The Catholic Church uses its influence to promote the dignity of life. Correspondent Wyatt Goolsby joins us from New York City, where he is covering the U.N. General Assembly. Good evening, Wyatt. Lauren, good evening. The Holy See earned a spot as one of the top negotiators here at the UN. They regularly weigh in on a number of issues like epidemics to corrupt regimes to even human rights violations. But there is one issue, one topic rising to the surface this year, and that's the plight of refugees and migrants around the world. They're fleeing from violence in the Middle East, from corrupt Central and South American governments, and from religious persecution in places like Myanmar. Millions of migrants and refugees are trying to stay alive and build a better life for their families. Archbishop Bernardito Alza, the Holy See's ambassador, tells me their mission is to pray and advocate for those who are often marginalized. It's a necessary forum for, uh, for discussions, for debates. You know, we have what the Pope called the, the culture of encounter. His Excellency led top UN officials in a prayer service last week, using the words of Pope Francis to pray for migrants, the environment, and world peace. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who is Catholic, also thanks faith groups for their help on the ground. We may follow many faiths, but we all share a common ethical foundation to treat humanity with humanity. And this is the message loudly conveyed by so many inspiring religious leaders. A profound statement according to Anna Halpine. She's the founder of World Youth Alliance, which advocates for the value of human dignity. She tells me she's never heard a UN Secretary General give such a high compliment to faith-based organizations. States are looking for ways that they can welcome and integrate individuals. Uh, they're looking for ways they can protect these migrants, and that's becoming uh, a more and more important topic that links in particular to Pope Francis's other priority of human slavery and human trafficking. And in its important topic here in the United States as well, the Obama administration planned to take in over 100,000 refugees for this year, but published reports indicate that the, that the Trump administration may cut that number to below 50,000. Now, U.S. bishops had sent a letter to the president asking for him to take in at least 75,000 refugees into the United States. Lauren? That's an increase. So why are the bishops speaking out right now? Well, Lauren, the U.S. bishops say it would be inhumane to cut the number of refugees allowed into the United States since the number of displaced persons around the globe is reportedly at an all-time high. Lauren? That video of those refugees, just, just heartbreaking. Thank you. Correspondent Wyatt Goolsby in New York City.